Hi there, this is Mochi and today I'm going to show you how to unzip your purchase embroidery files. So the types of zip files that you order off of Etsy or other embroidery file selling websites, how to unzip them, how to extract the right design file type for your machine and ultimately get it onto your embroidery machine for use. So zip files are something that might be really common to those of us who have used them in a professional context to move files around the workplace, um, but they often aren't very common for people who don't use computers in their everyday lives because you're just not often using and moving files around that are so large that they need to be zipped. And we'll explain that in just a minute about why zip files are used to move around files versus just a regular folder or regular attachment. Um, so they're not very scary at all, even if you're unfamiliar with them. They're just a different method of moving around files or downloading files. And uh, it's a very, very quick process to just unzip the file and get it onto your machine after identifying the right file that you need from the zipped folder. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step process about how to do that. It's going to break it down really, really simply, step-by-step, -step, based on a Windows operating system. Um, but the same applies to other types of softwares, um, interfaces, and um, ultimately, like if you're working off a MacBook, the process is very, very similar. So one of the reasons why I like making these videos is because women have historically been involved from the start in computer science and computer engineering, starting off originally as uh, weavers. The loom is really what kickstarted computer science and computers today still use that logic that was developed for looms and weaving complex patterns. You know, and then progressing through the ages, women were involved as con control switch operators um, and programmers and then eventually um, leading to like, you know, space-based sciences where computers were huge and needed to compute data. Um, women were involved in even making a lot of the parts for those very, very sensitive space instruments because a lot of them were still based in textile sciences, you know, in copper wiring weaved a very particular way to conduct electricity in a certain way. Um, and so I find that women's roles in technology has been really minimized and kind of reduced down to, you know, hobbies like sewing and embroidery when really we're still using the same scientific know-how we've always had and we've always been very interested in. It's just now in a different look. It's wrapped up in a different package and zip files are one of those packages. So back to zip files. Again, like I said, zip files are not scary at all. They're just a different method of moving files around um, and we'll see their value in just a minute. Um, so zip files are one of the products that came out of computer science um, and they're strangely enough, not available as a default option on, most, on most, most computers. And we'll get to that in a minute. So if you haven't encountered them before, don't worry. You probably just haven't had to need them before. Um, and with your embroidery machine purchase, now you find yourself wanting to add more designs to your machine or to make different types of projects. Um, and this is probably the first time that you've come across them. So again, step-by-step, step, we're just gonna go through it about how to download your zip file, unpack it, and get the right files out for your machine. So like I said, zip files are one type of moving files around. And so the idea is, is that you have this one master folder, the zip file or zip folder, um, and you unpack it or you unzip it to contain all of these other um, files that are design files, just in different file types. And the reason why that is the case is because when you are an embroidery designer, like you're digitizing things and you're selling your own designs online, like on Etsy or on your own website, it is really, really easy just to take five more minutes and format your design into the right file types for many different types of embroidery machine brands. I myself have a brother machine. I have like the Neat Q 1600E and I love it. And so I really only need the PES file. But when I design things, it's really simple for me just to take that extra few minutes and make sure I have a PES version, a DST version, a triple X, you know, the GEF, SUS, XSP, and other embroidery types. Um, so that when I'm selling to the designs, I don't have to do any guesswork about which version or which file type or which brand of machine my consumer has. However, I still need to make sure that I can, I'm only really uploading one file or four 
folder to Etsy. And from there, the consumer can pick the file type that they need, hence using zip files, because I can just zip everything up, zip all these different versions of files of the same design into one folder and post that to Etsy. So this is an explanation of a little bit about how zip folders work. So on your computer, your computer memory is considered real estate. So when you think about real estate, um, it's very, very expensive and you have to be strategic about it. You have to be strategic about where you put things, what you put on um, and how you store and organize all of these files. If you're like me, I have probably hundreds of different embroidery designs. And so I want to make sure I'm making the most of my computer's memory or my computer's real estate with managing all these files. And zip files are one way to address this. When you uh, zip a file, you are compressing that file. And when you're compressing files, what you're doing is that you're making them smaller in terms of the memory needed to read them. And this allows you to um, make the file size smaller and send it easier and faster. Because sometimes certain platforms have limits on the amount of data you can move around um, because it takes up too much memory to be held on the servers that are usually hosting the platform. And so servers are basically just a place like in the cloud, um, even though they are technically physical machines where things are temporarily stored. So for example, if I upload my embroidery um, files to Etsy to sell, what I'm doing is I'm uploading them to Etsy's computers. So servers are just computers that are used to store things for websites and platforms and things like that. But when the user downloads it, the user also has very limited real estate on their computer. And so we wanna make sure that they are able to download the file and hold it onto their machine's memory and get the files out of it that they need. Um, and so this is where zip files are really handy because when things are smaller, they're easier to transport, they're cheaper to store. Again, just like real estate, if any of ev anyone has ever had a storage unit, right, the smaller storage units are cheaper. And so this is one way to accomplish that. And then the best part is, is that when you unzip or when you uncompress, you know, your zip folder or your zip file, the design is not affected at all by that. The design does not become less quality, doesn't become fuzzy, doesn't lose any of the features because of the technology of compressing it in a way that it still stores the original details of the design, um, which we call fidelity. So it's a high fidelity method of moving files around while taking up limited real estate. And so on the other end, again, when you unzip it, that fidelity, that trueness to the original design's details is still there, hasn't been affected at all. It's not like when you make a picture really, really small and then you try to blow it up again and you notice that the image is distorted. This is not like that at all. It is quite the opposite. It is a fantastic method of um, uh, compressing files to make them smaller and then enlarging them again without losing any details in the design, which is fabulous. So the one downside to this is that uh, most computers do not come pre-stocked with zipping software. And you do need zipping software because um, this is something that's an add-on feature, not essential to using your computer. So it's a nice to have, but not a need to have by, you know, computer designers. Because at the end of the day, you know, the average computer user probably is, does, like I said, does not need or does not encounter zip files outside of a professional capacity. Personally, I use WinZip, which is just listed here, and you can um, Google around for them. Um, their website lists their software as about $39.95 American, um, but there is a free version that they call the evaluation version that you can try out before purchasing it, or you can even uh, download alternative um, zipping software, you know, or like, you know, to be very transparent, you can bootleg WinZip very easily or older versions of um, WinZip. The technology behind zipping folders has not really changed a lot in the past decades. Um, so even an older version does not make a big difference in your ability to zip or unzip files.
So like I said before, essentially what softwares like WinZip will do is that they'll take that downloaded zipped file and they will uncompress it or unpack it into all of the design files of the different types that it contains. And what we're going to do now is just walk through that process using WinZip as an example of how that happens um, and how ultimately you get your files out. If you have a MacBook and not a um, Windows operating system like I'm about to show here, the steps are about the same. The buttons might be in a different place or they might look a little bit different, but the process is ultimately the same and you can absolutely download uh, WinZip for your Apple devices. So how does this help you get your design file? So like I said, we're going to go through the step-by-step -step process of how you extract that file using software like WinZip. So this is just going to be from start to finish, all the buttons you need to click, you know, uh, where you should consider putting it on your computer. Um, and then ultimately in the next video, we're going to look at how you take that file and put it on your USB stick or flash drive to physically put onto your embroidery machine. So all of this is to say that the background of understanding how zipped files work and the software that is needed to zip or unzip them is just really important knowledge to have um, in case anybody else asks you for help with their embroidery machine or you know even if you want to move files around for other types of application it's always great to have a little bit of technical know-how for this and you know if you have any problems with zipping or unzipping fo folders or files that you've purchased now you have more knowledge about what might go wrong you know, based on your understanding about how the technology works. So moving forward, we're going to use this really, really cute doggy keychain of Adashand um, as an example. And just to be very uh, transparent, I have no affiliation with this Etsy seller. Um, this is just a design that I downloaded for my niece to make her some cute keychains. And I just really enjoyed how simple it was. Um, and so I'm going to use it as an example moving forward for all the steps we need to take. So here is the item page. So you can see I favorited it. I'm signed in with my Etsy account. Um, and um, I'm going to now purchase the file. So before I purchase the file though, I want to double check that this um, design comes in the right file type. So if you scroll down from the item page like I've done here and you check the description, you can see that the following formats are included in the download. So we have the DST, the EXP, HUS, GEF, GEF+, PS, VIP, VP3, XXX, um, and so if you notice that the file type that your machine uses is not listed here, you know, you're not going to be surprised when you unzip that folder and you find it missing because it was never listed to begin with. And this is really important to take note because when you download the design file, the design file is going to have a different name than all of the file formats listed here, right? Because remember, we're only downloading that one master file and then we're unpacking it to have all of these uh, following formats. So we can see here that um, all of the formats correspond to different machines. Um, and this is like, isn't completely exhaustive because if you have embroidery software, you can often take a, a certain file type and you know, convert it to your machine's type um, if you don't see it listed here. Um, and so this is why we just double check that if we're looking for a really easy project, one that isn't going to give us any trouble, or maybe we don't have the fancy embroidery software to convert the file into the file type we need, um, then we just want to make sure that, you know, our machine's file type is listed here. So I have a brother machine, like I mentioned, and so I see that the PES file type is listed here, so we are good to go. And I'm just going to, again, be aware that when I download the file, it's going to be um, a file with a different name. It's not going to be, you know, dashon.pes or dashon.brother, right? Because we have to unpack it to get to the PES uh, file type first. So in your Etsy account, after you've purchased it, which I didn't so show here for confidentiality reasons, you can go into your purchase purchases and reviews in your Etsy account um, to get the downloadable file from the um, seller that you just bought the Dashan file type from. 
So here I'm in that page now where it lists all of my past Etsy purchases. So you can see here, I also downloaded some other embroidery things for my knees. Um, but if you look at the red arrows here, you can see that we have the Dashaun purchase that we made of the key fob and the included file is that one zip folder, right? It's not going to be all those different file types. You know, it's not gonna be like the, the five to eight file types that we saw listed. It's just gonna be the one zip folder. It tells you that it's a zip folder, right? not going to just be one folder. So we need to make sure we have our um, unzipping and zipping software, that WinZip software ready. And so next we're just going to download the files. So this is going to, again, download the files from where they are being stored on Etsy's servers, right? On Etsy's computers, you know, the real estate that this file is taking up, um, we're going to download a copy from them. So when we click that button, we're taking to a very specific downloads page for um, this particular order. So again, we see the Dosh on key fob and we're gonna hit the download button uh, near the red arrow one more time. And again, this is going to put it from Etsy's computers onto our local computer. So the computer that we are doing all of this from here today. This is where we need to make sure that we already have WinZip installed. So this is the WinZip website. Uh, like I said, you can um, try it for free. Um, this is the uh, Windows version, um, but you can absolutely find it or comparable options for um, Apple computers and products. Um, and like I said, you know, you can try it for free for a little bit and then you can buy it for $40 or find alternatives. Um, so this is what I already have downloaded on my machine. And so this is what we're gonna use today to unzip the file that we just purchased. So when you download things, unless you've already specified otherwise, it is just gonna to go to your designated downloads folder on your computer. And so every computer has a downloads location and it's just built into your computer. Um, and then from there, you can organize it how you want. Um, but just to highlight here that very often your downloads is listed nested under your desktop, under my computer or like the specific computer that you have, um, just in case you have networked computers, which is something I won't get into today. Um, you just want to make sure that you're putting the downloads onto the right machine in case you have linked machines. So after the file is finished downloading, you can see here that it was, I re-downloaded it. I've already been using it in the past, of course. And so here it is listed in this red box. Um, you can see that the icon for the file is different. It's a series of books with like a belt buckle around it, kind of signifying that it is being held together or that it's compressed. And it has a very different name um, than even the item name or the file types, right? So it's mmc133a.doxyst.zip, right? So if you have trouble finding the file after you download it, you know, just keep an, keep an open mind that the file name is gonna be different and they often don't list the file name in the Etsy page. Um, so you just have to keep an eye out for it in your downloads and you can also check for the date it was added if you knew you added it recently. And you can see here, if you look at the columns of the file explorer window we are in, the type says WinRAR zip file. And that's because um, I can tell that the Etsy seller also used WinZip to zip this file. So, um, so it's even better that I'm using WinZip to unzip the file now. So you can see here that I'm using an evaluation copy, quote unquote, for my WinZip. Um, and that's perfectly fine. It was going to do the job. So what I did is that I clicked on that uh, folder we saw on the previous page and it opened up WinZip. Because I have WinZip already downloaded, the software knows, um, your Windows software knows to open this WinZip file in WinZip. So unless you set up your computer otherwise, which I don't find most people do, it will match the file type with the software the computer thinks is best to open and view the file. So we don't have to do a lot of thinking with that. So here we can see that uh, the highlighted blue bar that's at the very top, that is essentially our master folder. So right now we are viewing what's inside that folder. So we can see here that we have a folder for documentation. We have a bunch of folders for the various design types. Um, and then we have a JPEG, which is if you open it after purchasing this particular design, you'll see it's just a JPEG image of the Dachshund, um, you know, just so that you can um, see it in case you don't have any particular embroidery software.
So we can see here that all of the file types that we saw listed in the Etsy page are listed in the WinZip folder. So that's fantastic. That's exactly what we would expect. If we notice that any of them were missing, like let's say, again, I use a brother machine, so I'm looking for a PES file. That PES file was listed on the Etsy page, but it wasn't in the actual WinZip folder. I'd be very upset and I'd be contacting the seller, you know, to rectify that situation, right? So it's always good to check because you are paying for all these file types. And even if you don't particularly um, care about the other design types, you might still want them. You might still want to um, use them with a different machine or a friend's machine, um, you know, or you might change your machines in the future. So it's always good just to double check that you are getting what you pay for once you uh, unzip that folder. So the next button we're going to check is the extract to uh, button at the very top here. Um, it's again like a folder icon with extract to underneath it. And so what that's going to do is that it's going to take all of these um, smaller files that are inside the big zip folder. And it's going to again unzip or uncompress them and extract them or move them to a different place on your computer. Because chances are, if you're like me, you don't want to keep your files, all of your files in the download folder. It just gets very messy. So we're going to extract or unpack and move these files into a better place and into their true form again. So once you click that extract to button, it now wants to know what path it should use. And the path is just like the address on your computer's real estate. So like I said, right now it wants to put everything into downloads because it thinks right now that that's the best place for it to be because it was originally a downloaded file. But that gets really messy for our file management. So we're not actually going to stick it there. Um, but it's important just to know what paths are because a lot of software related to um, file management is going to be like this. So path is just the address of where you want to store this on your computer's real estate. It's just the folder or the location on your computer. So the software knows where to put the files when we're all done with them. And then we're just going to go to the next slide where we're going to make a new folder here. So I've made a new folder under documents, under my user account in my computer, and I've just called it embroidery files. And so you can store um, your files wherever you want for the purposes of putting them on your machine using a USB stick or flash drive or the purposes of using them in embroidery software. It really doesn't matter where on your computer that you put them, right? I have a machine that uses a USB stick or flash drive. Um, and so we'll get into that in a future video about how to take these files from this folder that we've created and ultimately put it on your machine. But for now, we just need to know we're putting everything in a consistent place. And so I've called this folder just embroidery files, like I've said. And so you can see here, like once I make that uh, file uh, folder, it shows up in the list here that's highlighted. Um, and I'm going to hit okay and it's going to move everything to that folder we just created. So you can see here that, so we click that button and you know it will do its magic behind the scenes and then we'll navigate in our computer, we will navigate to our embroidery file folder we just made. So remember the address. So I put it under my user account on my computer in my documents and I called it embroidery file. So here we are at that address in our computer's real estate. So when we click that folder now, we see that yes, everything is in the right place. We did it. All of the file types that we saw listed on that Etsy page and we got to preview in the WinZip software are all together in the right place, including that documentation folder and including that JPEG folder. So everything is fantastic now. So we did it, we're good to go. We can now move these onto our embroidery machine in just a minute. So one thing you just want to double check is that you have opened your folder where you where you moved all of those unzipped files to. 
Um, and now we're just going to open up the folder of our particular machine that we need and just double check that we see um, the right file type in the right folder. So this is the PES folder. This is for brother machines. And we can see here, we got our two files. Um, so the Etsy page had listed that they have a single design type and then they have a design where it's three of the keychains in one design. So we see both here with the right file type under the right folder. They're, in, they're the PES file types under the PES folder. So now we're good to go. So what we could do in the next video is just we move those onto our USB stick or flash drive and then we put it onto our machine. But now we know where the files are. We know that the files are in the right format and we know that the files have been unzipped or uncompressed. So now they're appropriate to use on our machine. So that's really it. Uh, we are good to go for the next steps of moving them onto our machine. And you know that only took maybe five clicks of a button to unzip our zipped folder. So our compressed, much smaller folder and to uh, move it onto our computer and then ultimately get all the files we want with no effect to the design's fidelity or the design's trueness and detail at all. It's that easy. 